Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up an overset method in ANSYS Fluent. The overset is an innovative method which involves the creation of independent meshes with the goal of overlapping them. With this method we can create a background mesh and one or more meshes to overlap. The best part of this method is the fact that instead of calculating the equation in every single element of the mesh, Fluent will solve the only cells affected by changing due to the motion of the body we are studying. The governing motion equations are solved on all meshes and then the computed solutions are interpolated and shared between all the meshes. In this tutorial we will see how to set up and compute the solution of a fluid dynamics problem in ANSYS Fluent using the overset method. There are two main advantages of this method. The first one is that by creating more meshes the construction of the model is simplified while the second one is that the calculation runs faster since it's based on a smaller number of elements. In this tutorial we will see how to use the overset method for a 2D analysis of the aerodynamic behavior of a vertical axis turbine. Let's start with the background mesh, which is the one that represents the domain of our model. Let's open Design Modeler going on block A and double click on Geometry. In this tool you can modify the geometry of your background by dividing it into several parts. The focus of these initial phases is to define surfaces that could simplify the construction of the mesh in the following steps. A good body definition allows to have a good coincidence between the dimensions of the mesh's elements in which the actual overset will take shape, which, as we'll see later, is extremely important in this method. So, as you can see over there, we choose for a division like that, which gave us the opportunity to set the thinnest elements in the square and then outward the bigger ones. It's also important to define the dimension of the background big enough to visualize all the space affected by the phenomenon we are studying. In our case, for example, with a 3 meter diameter turbine, we choose a domain 48 meter wide and 24 meter height. Done with this first layer, we can move to the second one. So, once again, by double clicking on geometry on first block, this time the one in the second line, we can check the geometry of the subdomain. For our study about the 2D turbine, we create a sketch in Katia and then we imported it into Workbench, but if you prefer, you can also use any other CAD software. In case like ours, where the background is much bigger than the subdomain, it's important to set dimensions big enough to allow smoother increase in size of the elements towards the boundary. There are several methods by which you can structure your mesh. In this case, we've opted for O modified scheme since it is the one in which the elements of the mesh are as similar as possible to each other throughout the subdomain, which is essential since the rotating profiles will be affected by the flow of air from all directions, but we'll show you better all this stuff in the following steps. Done also with the geometry of the subdomain, we can move to the creation of the mesh. Let's go first with the background. In this case, the rectangular shape and the correct subdivision I will pass in the process, where, as said before, we set the thinnest element in the square and then outward the bigger ones. To do this, we have add sizing to our edges, setting a specific number of elements per edge and using a bias factor to thin out the size of the element toward the outside. Further, there are two important things to do in ANSYS Mesh. The first one is to set some name selection over there in order to facilitate the identification of the boundary zones in Fluent. We named as inlet the edge at the entrance of the dominion, outlet the edge at the exit, top down wall the upper edge and the lower one, and fluid stationary all the faces containing the domain. In this case we have defined these but you have to select the ones that are relevant to your particular case. And the other important thing to do before closing ANSYS mesh and moving on is to check the quality parameter of the mesh by clicking the top right metric graph button. Here it is possible to check several parameters. First, skewness control allows to visualize what elements are distorted. Zero means no distortion while one means max distortion and after that you have to check the orthogonal quality which is really important in cases like ours because better it is, faster and more accurate the gradient calculation will be influent. And in the end you have to check the aspect ratio which indicate how much your elements are square. The higher this value will be, the lowest equality between the sides your elements will have. So it's better to have the smallest values possible. 
Done this, we can proceed by meshing the subdomain by doing the same steps just made for the background. Even here, you have to name the relevant edges and faces like done before. Again, just for example, we named as overset all the outline of the subdomain in order to indicate the interface between the two layers overlapping. And then wall blades, the edges of the NACA profiles, and lastly, fluid rotative, all the faces of the subdomain. Even in this case, it's important to check the mesh parameters following the same direction explained before. So check skewness, orthogonal quality and aspect ratio before moving on. And one more interesting thing to consider if you are dealing with some cases similar to ours, in order to get the best definition possible of the boundary layer, pay attention to the thickness of the first layer of elements around the wall which interacts with the fluid. For example, we have set element height to 4 times 10 to the power of minus 5 meters. So, done with the geometry and the meshes, let's go with Fluent. To correctly let the overset run, you have to link the blocks as we made here, and once done, you can launch Fluent. When you first start the program, you will be asked to select between some options. We're running in double precision as it is recommended for all overset meshing cases. And set 4 as the number of solving processors since is what we had available, but if you are working on a powerful machine, select the highest number you can in order to get the better calculation performance possible. Now you have to set various fundamental parameters before run the simulation. We will show you what we have set for our study, but you will have to be careful to set the one that best suits for your case. First, in the general menu, you have to select the type of your flow, we selected transitory. Then, on modules, we opted for K Omega SST as suggested by literature for our particular application. On material, you have to set what you're using, we set air for the background. On cell zone conditions, on fluid stationary, we had nothing to set since our background stays still, while fluid rotative allowed us to set the angular speed. On boundary conditions about the inlet, we set speed of the air at the entrance of the background on the left. For example, for a simulation, we've set 7 meters per second along the normal direction to the edge. It's fundamental to set the component boundary zones to the overset boundary type, which is as you can see, we've already done. If you didn't, remember to set it up, since the overset boundary type tells Fluent the region where to couple the meshes. For the outlet, we've just set 0 pascal to the gouge pressure. On wall, we've set all three wall blades as moving relative to adjacent cell zone, so they moved at the same speed of the subdomain's mesh, and obviously, in our case, we selected also the rotational option. While for wall top-down, we've set the same speed of the flow at the inlet. Overset interface is the key option to set the overset method and in which you have to define the interface between the background. In our case, the stationary domain and the rotational subdomain. To do this, you have to select your zones and then name the overset interface. Note that if we had not manually created the overset interface, Fluent would have created a default overset interface including all of the cell zones. That would have been okay for this application, but in many cases manually creating the overset interface or interfaces could increase the solver performance by only including the relevant background and component meshes. In solution methods menu, we opted for a couple scheme combined with these special discretization options over there. About the report definition, we created three different reports. One for the first along X by new first report force select all the blades, give it a name, and then OK. One for the first salon Y, same steps, new, force report, force, select all the blades, give it a name, swipe the axis, and OK. And one for the momentum, new, force report, moment, select moment, select all the blades, give it a name, OK. Now residual, we set them all to minus 4, even though that would have been better to set them to minus 5, but to lightning the calculation, we are ok with minus 4. On report file is important to set the correct option, since from this setting will depend the file you can work on later in MATLAB. So select fx, fy, iters per time step and momentum, and then ok. 
Now, before running the simulation, it can be useful to set the autosave options. For example, we set it every 20 time steps in order to get a good amount of data but not too much which could slow down the process. Now let's go to the initialization menu. By initialization, Fluent establishes the domain connectivity. By enabling overset, Fluent displays the cells where the solution will be obtained. Here's what the domain looks like after the domain connectivity is established. By default, cell meshing priority is based on cell volume, so you can see here that the interface doesn't follow where the overset boundary lies because it follows where the cell size are similar. This method could be okay for cases like ours where the cells have all a pretty regular shape, but if you're using an unstructured mesh which could have irregular resolution, then the default donor priority based on cell size can lead to non-smooth interfaces. Even if a smooth interface does not directly correlate to the quality of the solution, it is possible to change the priority method. In fact, using text commands, you can change the donor priority method from cell volume based to boundary distance based. Now reinitialize to re establish domain connectivity using the new method. Re displaying the domain, you can see that the boundary distance based method moved the interface to be equidistant between the wings elements, and zooming out, you can see that the interface is smoother than before. However, the trade off is that the transition no longer occurs where the cell size are similar. As said before, in our case, also the cell volume based method was ok, but we opted for the boundary distance because it involves a smaller number of elements, which is really better when you don't have a lot of computational power available. Now that we've created the overset interface and initialized establishing domain connectivity, there are no further steps required to make overset meshing work. Let's run the solution. Once the calculation is complete, you can start working on the results which you obtained. For example, by clicking on results in solution block back in Workbench, you can visualize the various contours of the study, or if you, like us, are studying a transient phenomenon, you can make a video of it. Moreover, if you're interested in analyzing the results which you obtained, you can also import them in software like Excel or MATLAB by using the report file that Fluent saves in the project directory. This concludes this demonstration of overset meshing in Fluent. Hoping we've helped you. Thank you for watching.